Hi. <laughs> it's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. So happy all of you are joining us here today on the Nanny Bubby Facebook page. Please um, introduce or please allow me to introduce my dear friend Colette Brown, who's a wellness concierge and who is here today to talk with us about Masney. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Look who's here, Colette <laughs> Brown. I know that you know her, and I know that we're all so excited to hear what she has to say. So if this were regular broadcast television, I would have introed this segment with just me, and then little by little, the camera would have pulled out and shown the two of us. But so here you are, and I'm so happy that you're here. We've been promoing this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so we are going to ask all of you to ask questions. We'll keep our eye on the phone here. It's, you know, we have to read, we have to talk, we have to ask questions, we have to say hello to all of you. My mom is on. And Tawny Bennett is there because she always is. My husband is there. So uh, you can say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and we are coming to you from beautiful Laguna Beach. And I live in Los Angeles, so I should know better. But I'm a little chilly, so I have a really warm blanket that is warming me up on my lap and so it feels really good of which i might actually pull a little piece of it because it is much colder out here than it looks in southern california especially last night it was really really cold anyway here is my husband he is watching so apparently our mics are are, uh, are working fine we're a little bit worried about the mic so vlay if you're watching no we finally got this one right so we're talking about mask need today and before, you know, this is like a new disease that is being caused by wearing masks all day long. And so for those of us that just go in and out of grocery stores, it's not that apparent. But if you happen to be any kind of worker, like at the, the um, like first state, responders, or, first responders, mm -hmm. I was thinking about the DMV, you know, they have to, people come in to register mm -hmm. all day long. They're wearing those masks eight hours a day. If you're a restaurant Chefs. worker. Chefs chefs Waitresses. yeah everyone and you really see them struggling but before we actually talk about mask me i know that we call you a wellness concierge so mm -hmm. just to find that for everybody at home watching okay and um we'll talk about it so um i consider myself a wellness concierge because i don't feel that it's just one thing i feel that our health becomes um becomes us from our environments like the stress level that we have um, the uh, the gut health, the skin health, topically what we're in, what we're eating and consuming, and um, and then it manifests on our face. And um, what kind of exercise are we getting? Um, are we meditating? Are we um, thankful? And do we have a gratitude practice? It's everything. It's cumulative, and uh, and I believe that if we can just figure out. A really nice rhythm in life of integrating all of those that we can be well and so that's why I consider myself a wellness concierge as just opposed to a wellness coach or a skincare specialist because it really is inside out and outside in in many regards and so when it comes to skin which is where I know your education is mm -hmm. and you've had a lot of you know working with skin I know that you have um, a lot of Hollywood um, uh, celebrities i guess for lack of a better word mm -hmm. um who are your clients that will remain nameless but nonetheless you have quite a clientele and what seems to be especially right now what is the biggest complaint in skin today um the biggest complaint right now that i've identified is mask knee mm -hmm. and that is the acne that is associated with wearing a mask so when you are wearing a mask uh what's happening is that you're getting um, bacteria that comes from the, our breath inside of our mask, our pores open, bacteria goes inside, mm -hmm. and it closes over, and um, and then it manifests. And a lot of people who've never dealt with ma um, acne before oh, are now dealing with it. And some people also um, that have dealt with it before, that it's reoccurring now, it's kind of a panic state, and so people will start being really aggressive with their skin. They'll start scrubbing it, over scrubbing it, using products on it that they shouldn't, and it disrupts what is the microbiome, which are millions of microorganisms, bacteria, that they cohabitate with us. They are greater than we are, and we're disrupting their ecosystem. And so the question is, like people come and they want to either have their skin look brighter, tighter, um, just healthier glowing and now with the acne as well 
Um, they want to know how to how to deal with it. Well, you know, when you talk about the microbiome and you're talking about uh, the bacteria and certainly the viruses, you could agree that viruses have cohabitated with us for as long as man has been on the earth, correct? correct. And so it's very interesting when we talk about the microbiome that we're actually in the middle of COVID, mm -hmm. which is a virus. And so how do you relate to what is going on with the virus and with the bacteria? And, and because that is all a part of the microbiome. In fact, and, and I just wanna share this with you and for those of you at home, I am a big fan of Dr. Zach Bush. Um, he believes that the soil and where food is grown uh, has everything to do with the microbiome of your gut. And in fact, he, he through his research, he's a cancer doctor, found that there is a bacteria or there's um, a mineral in carrots that actually help to cure cancer. Mm -hmm. But when he started drilling down on those carrots, he found that that mineral was missing in the carrots that we're buying off of our grocery store. And why? Because the soil that they were being grown in to in order to sell them in our grocery store was being plummeted with um, insecticides, most importantly glyphosate, which is Roundup, as, as many of you will know. Um, and he did a talk four years ago in 2016 and said that the very next pandemic that is going to hit the, the earth is going to come from the Hude province of China, hmm. which the Hude province is actually where um, Wuhan is. And why? Why did he pinpoint that area on the map? is because that was the highest use of glyphosate in the world. Hmm. Four years later, he was a genius because he had predicted it. But based on his knowledge, it was not that hard to predict. But based on that, I mean, we're talking about bacteria, we're talking about virus. Mm -hmm. what, what are you having to say from your wellness point of view about COVID and the current virus that we're all so f afraid of contracting at this point? So it's kind of um, good versus evil. We see this in movies, we see it in um, cartoons all the time. And so we need to um, allow our good bacteria, the good guys, to fight on our behalf. And we want to be able to have more good guys than bad guys mm -hmm. so that they can conquer them when they do come in to invade. And so how do we do that? Um, there's a lot does, of different ways. Does bacteria actually fight virus in some way? If your immune system is down, uh -huh. you can't fight the virus. And so when you bolster your immune system through vitamin C, um, D, B, zinc, zinc um, and, you, and your, your body is able to be healthy, um, then you can fight intruders. Um, but without a healthy microbiome, then um, they're easily penetrated through cracks in the skin. Oh. Um, and if you're, a lot, of, a lot of people have eczema, psoriasis, and that's all gut related that's manifesting in the skin. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can treat it topically, but internally, if you have a really robust, healthy system, then your body can fight intruders like the COVID virus that's coming in. Obviously, if you do get COVID, there will be more steps that you need to take most likely some mm -hmm. people can write it out easily and others not so easily so I think it depends on the um, state of your health inside to how you're going to um, react if you were to come in contact with the virus and so what are you suggesting in terms of health and skin what is the number one thing that you can do to help your skin recover from nasty so number one is I like to just take a step back and I like to look and see what, we just got 20%. <laughs> oh I think we're battery. gonna be okay though. Battery okay. low, but I think we're gonna be fine. Okay. Um, so so if you um, look at yourself as a whole, I, I when I sit one-on-one -on -one with a patient, I wanna know um, what is your skincare routine? What is your um, supplement routine? What are you eating? Um, eating food is the number one predictor of your health. It all starts from within. Um, and then you build on that. And I wanna know, are you taking probiotics? Because we need to um, replenish 
our bodies because if we have taken antibiotics um, before it depletes a lot of the good bacteria and we need to rebuild that and if you eat a lot of sugar it also depletes the good bacteria there's all these different elements that are going on so we want to make sure to bolster our immune system from within very important um, and then I will look at your skin and uh, we'll do an assessment between supplements food and what you're doing topically right now and I would make a um, suggested protocol for you based on your diet and your skin um, so you've got beautiful skin and well I, I work at it it is it is the work that, it is. yeah it's definitely something I mean I get facials and mm -hmm. I you know I use the probiotics on my skin that you sent to me which were amazing I didn't know that you could do probiotics um, topically which was very interesting I'm, I'm really really concerned that we're gonna lose the battery and I, this is like going through my head now we had 62 well I can't plug it in because the mics are plugged into the power cord okay. right um, but if we have to uh, we might change phones and come right back because I, I this is really important information I really don't want to lose this information so we're gonna go as long as we can till the phone dies and just so you know I had 62% when we started and here we are five minutes in and we lost it so we'll just do the best that we can and I will come back and uh, find a way but um, but tell me just a couple of the things that we were talking about today, because right now my mind is all about a battery, so I lost my <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But go ahead. So so if you're if you're coming to me and saying I'm dealing with masking masking right now, I would ask you a lot of things. But um, when it comes to just me giving you information right now, number one, make sure that your skincare routine is full of microbiome friendly products, and which is which is. You want to make sure that you do have topical probiotics going on your skin and a lot of people claim that they have live probiotics um, coming in which is not necessarily true so where it's, would they find where where i mean unless they they called you and said send me you know let me buy these from you which is not possible for people all over the country they're working mm -hmm. you know looking at this but where would they find topical probiotics um, you can speak with your skincare specialist to a dermatologist um, and I would qualify them first and ask them about their knowledge in topical probiotics because this is a more new science dealing with the microbiome and so I would qualify them first and make sure that they know what they're talking about um, and then ask them for their advice or opinion on what a good uh, microbiome friendly product looks like. Um, and they could also customize it to you um, and make recommend recommendations. And I would also make sure that you're ingesting a really good topical or an, in, uh, probiotic insight to feed the microbiome of the gut and also taking prebiotics to feed the probiotics. Mm -hmm. And what we really want is the postbiotics, which is the byproduct, the waste that probiotics are giving out and um, that heals us. It's more like getting a deep skincare treatment like a microneedling and um, your skin goes to repair. That's a postbiotic. That's a reaction that your skin is getting or your gut is getting when you when it releases from the probiotic. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm okay. going to ask everybody, let me just close this little warning on the low battery mode. And let me ask all of you, hey Ryan, so good to see you. Ryan McNamara, I went to like junior high with her <laughs> and she's on. So good to see you, Ryan. So here's what I'm going to ask all of you. Can all of you ask a couple of questions of Colette? Um, a, because it's interesting and I know you want to and I would be pleased to have you do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her read your questions as you ask them and I'm going to go get a battery cord and I'm going to plug us in so that we don't lose connection to all of you because we have so much to talk about. The sound quality will probably not be quite as good because we're going to have to unplug our microphones. Um, but it's better than losing this connection and there's so much, I mean, Colette drove all the way down here from Santa Monica. I'm in Laguna and I don't want just a battery to kill our energy and to kill the information and I want so much for all of you to have this information. It's so important. Our health and you know I just want to say this is that part of my cooking is that I want to give to all of you the thought and the idea that you don't want to just feed yourself and you don't want to just feed your family but you want to nourish your family. 
and nourish yourself. And so much of this has to do with what you take in and certainly what is on the outside of you as well. Your thoughts figure into your nourishment, right? Because you want to think nourishing thoughts. Um, but it, it, it's just so critical that we look at food and as much fun as I have making fabulous recipes for everybody to follow and everybody tuning in and watching me chop and, and do whatever. But, um, but I only like to do it in the context that there is a time to feast and a time to fast. There is a time to eat organic and, and try to stay on that path as much as you can. So, um, gee, I wish Tom would just like run and go get me the power cord. But anyway, I don't know if he's still watching. So ask your questions. Nancy, you're really good at asking questions. I know you're out there. Ryan, Tawny, my mom, whoever else is out there. I'm going to move this just a little bit closer to call out while I go get the power cord. This is live TV. This is how we do it. <laughs> Nancy and, just asked a question. Okay, good. She said, our, our heart is our health and, um, our, wait, our health, our health is our wealth. Is our wealth. Yes. yes. And talk Absolutely. about that. Um, so part of my, my philosophy is that we can have everything and we can be abundant in everything, but if we don't have our health, then we don't have anything. So, um, let's be healthy. Let's nourish our bodies and let's have fun too. And we had a really good question that came in, um, from Laura and, um, she wanted to know, um, the effects of drinking wine and, that's a great question. Um, number one, if you are drinking wine and enjoying wine, um, it's, it's fine because this is part of life and we don't want to deprive ourselves, but we also want to have a good time and how can we do that better? So number one, vitamin C, you want to take that before you're drinking and then after you drink, um, you want to help your body absorb any toxins. Um, so I recommend taking activated charcoal and you would take about 500 milligrams after along with vitamin D and um, that is going to help um, with your um, with your immune system and with the C and then the D and then you also want to take something called um, NAC um, and that is going to help with the free radicals uh, that are floating around it's going to help the production of um, of a chemical that will help absorb that is actually depreciated when you are drinking alcohol. Um, and so that's really important too. Obviously drinking water as well is going to um, hydrate you because if you wake up from alcohol dehydrated, um, it's just a, it's a horrible feeling. So drink a lot of water. When you're drinking a glass of wine, have two glasses of water with it. I recommend drinking coconut water too because it has electrolytes in it that help to replenish your body as well. Um, and then Nancy just asked, or no, Tani, Tani said, Tani how do you Benny. know Tani your Benny. probiotic is a good one? Okay, so um, it's that's a great question because there's so many good companies that are out there. And, um, oh, here we go. Yep. Okay. You're All back. Right. Let me just turn you off. Okay. So, um, the, the audio is not going to be good because we had to disconnect our, uh, microphones. We were wearing lavalier microphones, as you can see, but we had to disconnect them in order to put the power code in, but power cord in. <laughs> good job. Oh my God. Talk about live TV. Live TV. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, this is well, a good example of, of in life that things come at you that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. And um, it was nice that we laughed about it. It's good. This is this is a good example <laughs> of your outlook on life. And when things come at you, you just kind of have to sit back, assess, and then make an action plan and put a smile on because you know what? At the end of the day, everything's gonna work out. Um, so I was asked about what kind of probiotic that, that I would recommend and um, while there's a lot of good ones out there, um, the one that I've kind of reverted to has a prebiotic and a probiotic in it. Um, and that brand is Centol. I, I love it. And um, so I'm kind of stuck on that right now. But um, Natron's Healthy Trinity is another good brand um, that's refrigerated. Um, so just, yeah, feeding it is, is really good. And then there was another question about... 
uh, oh, you Nancy. Can go backwards. Okay, I never knew that. Thank you for showing me that. She scrolled up and down. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, and Sintol is spelled S Y N T O L. Correct. Yes. Okay. S Y N T O L. Okay, and you know what? I just saw that Valerie, who Asia just signed on, and I just saw her, and she asked a question about wine, right? Um, I I kind of addressed that. Oh, did you? And that Valerie asked, what foods are more likely to make you feel bloated? Oh, right. So that's a loaded question, kind of. Um, but not really. Um, so basically, my whole philosophy, I was sick for 20 years. I have a, a long story, but I'm going to really shrink it down. And no need. We've got a battery charge. <laughs> you, you don't have to drink anything. <laughs> We're not in a hurry anymore. And they said the audio is fine. Thank you Excellent. for that, Tani. And my husband said the audio is fine. Awesome. Okay. okay. So, um, so I was sick for 20 years, and um, I ate really healthy. I exercised. Um, I, and I, and I, no, whatever I did, it didn't matter. I went gluten free. Um, and three years after I went gluten free, I ended up in the emergency room two times in one month. The last time thinking that I was um, having a heart attack. Oh my gosh. It was really wow. bad. And, um, and it wasn't until a nurse and then a friend whispered in my ear about maybe you have something called leaky gut. And oh. I thought, what is that? I don't know what that is. And so, I ended up with an amazing gastrointestinal doctor, a GI, that practices um, uh, homeopathy, a more naturopath. And uh, he basically put me on, a, he did a blood analysis and found out foods that I, that I was reactive to. And what it came down to is that grains are bad for me. And they're bad and by for, grains. Define what you mean by by grains. So grains is um, is not just wheat or um, rye, but also um, rice. A lot of people say rice is gluten free or oats are gluten free, or but but they when they get inside the body, um, they are our bodies respond to them negatively and they do cause inflammation. And are they some, are they responding badly because they're a high carb? Or are they responding badly because it turns to some sort of a? a it's a more grain. it's a more simple it's a more simple carb. You do have more complex carbs, and then you have um, more simple carbs. So the faster they convert to sugar, the worse they are in our bodies, mm -hmm. as we know. But also grains, we don't know where they came from. Even if they're organic, they could have sat in a big bin, Ugh. and they could have um, just kind of molded. And then they're turned into a product that we're eating now, and that causes some kind of a reaction within our bodies. It can break out um, in in eczema, psoriasis. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but 95% of all um, autoimmune diseases are from the gut. That's yes. a fact. Yes, 95%, and is that what you said? 95%. I did not know that, but I knew that there's a lot of it. And I also mm -hmm. want to say something else about coffee look i know we're all addicted to coffee and i know that you know i mean we especially our children my children are coffee addicted they started drinking um you know the famous coffee <laughs> when they were you know late teens 18 19 20 years old but but here's two things i know about coffee number one coffee is the highest sprayed pesticide crop in the world mm. So when you're drinking coffee, you're taking a big dose of pesticide, which is very bad on your gut, it gives you leaky gut, right? Mm -hmm. Very bad to your microbiome. Mm -hmm. And also because that coffee sits in warehouses mm -hmm. and molds, I mean, tremendously mold coffee. Um, also what you find is, um, what are the little, what do they call pests like mice and- Rodents. Rodents, yeah rodents find their way into the bags Ew. of coffee and what they do is they take those huge bags and they grind them and the fda allows a certain amount of rodent uh if you ever drink coffee again you'll never drink it after this comment but there's they allow a certain percentage of rodent um stuff to be in in coffee and so these are the things that you really have to be careful of okay so that's all. Hey, Tom. Tom Gallagher, thanks for watching. So thanks for I'm, being here. Tell my sister to tune in. Great information for her. Okay, go ahead. So on the point of coffee, um, small roasteries. Yes. 
are a good option that are, they use organic beans mm -hmm. and so support your local roasteries um, right. they would and love bulletproof your bulletproof is mold free mm -hmm. and i'm guessing rodent free <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> That'll scare you. Okay. All right. Just wanted to add that. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know near as much information as Colette because I'm really into the art of cooking and providing for your family. But um, um, I, there yes. are different levels of organic foods. This is true. Mm -hmm. And just because it's stamped um, organic, it it really doesn't mean anything because some companies. I grew up in a little town called Yakima, Washington, mm -hmm. and. Um, what I learned is that some of the farmers there actually got their organic licenses years before it was ever popular. Now it's like a buzzword and they don't, they didn't have to be up to the same code as some of the new farmers do today that are trying to get their organic licenses. So, um, not all organic foods are created equal. Right. I would agree. And I would think that, um, as we probably know, going to your local farmer's market, um, is probably one of the best ways to make sure that you're getting organic foods that you're looking for. Right. And just because my husband, who is the funniest guy I know, just made a comment and said that he always tries to keep his rodent level be below 10%. <laughs> so if you didn't see his comment, do know that that man is married to me. He's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> And Valerie, did you did you did you talk Wait, about Nancy? No, what? Nancy said coffee is the one crop that is um, the heaviest pesticide sprayed. Mm. And oh That's my gosh, awesome. there's Elizabeth Skinner. So Elizabeth is actually oh my gosh, Elizabeth, I am so happy you're here. Um, Elizabeth is my skin care skin care specialist. Hi, she, Elizabeth. She is my <laughs> facialist. She is my sister in law, and um, she has done micro needling on my face. She really um, has taken good care with hydrating my face. It looks face. really good. You're doing a good job. <laughs> because There she goes. She sent a kiss. Mwah. I love you. My eye is better, Elizabeth, so I'm going to be calling you soon. Um, but uh, uh, she has really brought me a very long way with education and everything else. And so I'm so happy that you're watching. That is so cool. Do you watch every day, Elizabeth, or did you just happen to tune in today? I'm so happy that you did. <laughs> Um, Me too. So did you did you talk about wine and the effect that it has on your face? We did, and I, but it did not go into dry farmed wines. If, okay. If, well, because I missed it because I was busy getting a power cord, and that I really wanted to know what does wine do to your skin and to your face? Does it have a big impact? So, well, just from a high sight, it can dehydrate you, right? Right. So drinking at least you know two, two glasses of water while you're doing it is oh, important. Okay. Um, taking vitamin C before okay. is is really good and then after you drink if you've drank too much or you didn't drink too much um, before you go to bed if you take some activated charcoal oh mm -hmm, that helps to absorb any um, any toxins that you might have um, floating around and another one is knack um, and that's a supplement that you can take that helps bolster um, antioxidants and um, and helps your body to function properly to help eliminate waste. And the activated charcoal is kind of like a buffer between your liver and those toxins coming in. We were just talking about liver over lunch. Yes. <laughs> sure. And so it, it kind of acts as a buffer to absorb um, any of those toxins, um, uh, metals, um, and there's a purity in um, different types of alcohols that we drink. and. Um, really refined, like tequila or vodka, usually have gone through a very um, intense process. And so it is pure. But when you get to beer with all the grains. Oh, that's got to be murder, huh? Murder. Murderous. Talk about bloating. Yes. That'll do it to you. Yes. Is beer. Yeah. But none of us ladies really drink beer, right? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move this back just a little bit because we're, we're both jumping out of the shot. I just moved it a little so, too close. Valerie says it's activated charcoal, something to take once in a while, or can you take it often? Also, I wanted to say hi to Laura. Laura McNeese is here, so hi, sweetheart. So glad to have and you hi, joining Valerie. us. Hey, Valerie. Okay, yeah. Um, so activated charcoal is something that you want to take not all the time, like zinc. Zinc is really good for you, and everyone's saying during COVID, mm -hmm. take zinc. But if you take it often, then your body kind of, uh, it doesn't have the same effect on you mm -hmm. that it does if you take it sporadically. Oh, so, really? 
Yes. That's good to know. So you want to do it like if you're feeling a little bit lower in energy or you're feeling like you're a little bit uh, like you're coming into a cold or something, mm -hmm. you, you want to you want to take it to help bolster your immune system. Can I just say this about zinc? So mm -hmm. both my husband and I, um, so, and I want to say hi to Am Amy Ayub and Jennifer Tuttle. Hey, Jennifer, so good to have you here. Thanks for joining. And Amy, you too. I, I only see you online, but we're going to get together here real soon. Um, but both my husband and I get really nauseous from taking zinc. Now, I powered through that nauseousness when I had COVID because I just didn't want to die. So I, I didn't know how bad it was going to get. Um, but um, fortunately, I, I got nowhere near dying. And um, But I got very nauseous from taking the zinc, I can tell you that. So why why is that? And, and it's good to know that you don't need to take the zinc every day. Mm -hmm. That if you feel yourself coming down with something, then you take it. I'm getting hearts and love over there. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, what, what about the zinc? Let me scroll this up for you. Go ahead. So it's, it's oh. interesting that we, you know, we all have different body types mm -hmm. and are, we're just, we're all built differently. And recently I'm, I've been studying a little bit more about Korean medicine, Korean, Korean medicine, and they break down the human race into eight body types. Oh, and so like body type as in pear shape or no, no as in internal your organs oh so they measure the first thing they do is measure your liver and um and they measure some of the other organs to see which one you fall which category you fall into so i'm pancreatonia which means that i knew i liked her <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. so so i just found out that that I am supposed to minimize my consumption of poultry. Okay. Really low, like less than 20%. Meat is fantastic, pork, fish, um, but citrus for me is not good. It can cause um, UTIs, it can cause oh, um, cysts. Um, there's all kinds of things. So so I'm, I'm trying to minimize that. So I would love to know what your body type is and see if it fell into into that because um, it, it, it could just be like how you... Well, it's like my mother loves cilantro. I cannot stand it. If I get something with cilantro, I mean, if there's a recipe that calls for cilantro in the recipe, I always replace it with basil. I never use cilantro. It just tastes terrible to me, but come to find out, that's like a genetic thing. Either mm. you can eat it or- I love cilantro. Oh my God, yeah, I can't, I cannot eat it. I just hate it. I hate the smell of it. I hate everything about it. My mother can't get enough of it. So it, it's pretty um, darn amazing. Um, here's something else. Now look, I cannot tell you that this came from a medical source. This came from good friends that we were out with the other night and I was telling my story, which will take another hour and a half and no matter how many battery chargers I have, <laughs> they will not keep us alive long enough for me to tell my COVID story. But, um, but I was telling them that and they said, they asked me what blood type I am and what made me think about blood type is that, remember when they used to say the blood type diet? Mm -hmm. So if you were, you know, B, you, you ate a lot of lamb and if you were O or if you were A, you ate a lot of grains and you could eat more sweets and fruit. Um, but they said that there is research, and I don't know how true this is, because again, these came from friends over a bottle of wine. <laughs> Not a medical researcher, I can promise you. Um, but they said that there are studies that show that a negative RH factor, a negative mm. blood RH factor, um, is less apt to get COVID than a positive RH factor. Mm. And the least likely to get COVID is O negative. So my husband is O negative. I'm O positive. You're O positive. Um, I'm B positive. Our son is B negative. Um, so he'd be less likely because of the negative RH factor. And our daughter is O positive. So each of them got a little piece of both of us. But um, so it's interesting. And there's uh, Victoria Howell. So Vicki actually has COVID. Thank you. Um, do you need to put this around your shoulders? No, no, You're okay. Um, it actually keeps you very it's warm on your lap. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vicki, I, I, Vicki, send us a thumbs up if you finally tested negative. She has gone for testing three to four weeks after having gotten her first test and she's still testing positive. And Vicki, tell us, are you a negative uh, blood type, and RH factor? Asymptomatic? 
No, she's been home sick, but she's gotten better, and she thought she was ready to go back to work, and she keeps testing positive, so. I've heard of people being um, positive but asymptomatic, and they keep testing positive, and and it's interesting. That's very interesting. I I was pretty much asymptomatic, except for the fatigue. What other questions did we have? I got myself all rattled about the battery, and I just kind of want to come back here. We talked about wine. We talked about bloating. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, did we actually address what to do about the mask knee? Like, no. if, if I'm breaking out from wearing a mask every day because, let's see, did Vicki answer? Not yet. Um, from wearing a mask, what can I do? To, to cure it. Okay. I'm behind a mask eight hours a day. What do I do? So what you want to do, number one, it might sound obvious, but wash your mask. Oh, right. She said negative. Victoria. Oh, finally. Yay, Vicki. Tell me how many weeks you tested positive from your first test to, to um, and kept testing positive just out of curiosity. And we're also very happy for you. Um, okay. Yeah. She'll tell us. Um, so, so um, wash your mask. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people just wear it if they're wearing it sporadically or, or not, or you know. So just make sure to wash it. Number two is um, how often? How often do you need to wash your mask? I think it depends on how often you're wearing it. So if I'm wearing it to run into a store once a day, then maybe every couple of days I would wash mine. Um, if you're wearing it more than like an hour a day, I would say wash it at night or alternate your masks and make sure that because you're, you're breathing, you're, you're in like Los Angeles, like it's very polluted. There's a lot of cars and it's just dark, you know, metal. And I don't know, there's just a lot of pollution in the air. And so I think it depends on where you live too. So I want to make sure, and I'm just, I'm really clean like that. I don't, I don't like to mess around with it. So I'd rather wash my mask more alternate your masks out um, so that you do have a clean one that you can pop on. Um, number one. Number two. Um, or buy the disposables. Or right? disposables. You can. Do Those you know, hurt my ears. I get do My they? ears are so sensitive. Oh, and I, I, they go behind my ears and it, it really hurts me. I don't know why. If any of you else have that problem, but mm. I can get headaches from having like the tight mask on my ears. Do you know, I just want to say something. Our, my, our goal is to get to 20 people watching live. We just got to 14. So if every, all of you will just reach out to somebody and, and ask somebody to just to tune into the Nanny Bubby Facebook live page right now. We can hit our goal. It'll be the first time in history I've ever had 20 people watching live. We can do it. We get we get a ton of people uh, watching afterwards. But um, anyway, hi, Tammy Marvin. Nice to see you. Or is that Tammy? It is Tammy, yes. And, okay, Victoria Howe said, I'm negative blood type. Oh, so that blows a hole in that philosophy. But it was Debbie that had the three positive COVID tests. She's finally negative. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I confused the two of you. Okay. You're right. But she's finally negative after three, over three weeks time. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. I see Laura says lipstick equals mask mess. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I just showed, um, uh, call out my. She has sh- the most beautiful yeah, mask you've ever seen. It's a little Chanel mask. Do you see that? I don't think you can but see it. But they can't see the little, little bit. cord Maybe, on it. Yeah. It's like this little delicate. Um, oh, chain. chain. V- Vile gave me this beautiful chain. Um, but anyway, it. Um, I haven't. It always messed up my lipstick, which is why I don't like to wear it. <laughs> you can also do the the stain oh. instead of lipstick. You can well, put stain on. Yeah, I have your on, lips. I have on stain. But you do, it, and it still gets off? off. Well, I put gloss over the top of it. So yeah. What can I? Yeah, do? gloss comes. I mean, off it's for all sure. about the vanity, girls <laughs> and boys. <laughs> um, all about the vanity. Okay, so so yes, wash your mask, wear a disposable one, um, and then how are you taking care of your skin? So. My philosophy is kind of more that dirty skin is better than super squeaky clean skin. If you've washed your face before and it feels dry after, uh-huh. um, you're damaging your skin already. So you don't want to feel that dryness. So I recommend people after the day, wash off your face, wash off your makeup. And and then what you're gonna do is do your, your microbiome friendly products very important. And if you are treating acne, um, I recommend um, something I brought with me. So this is like a miracle. It's real, a real pure zinc um, based product that's very healing. Did you try? I did. 
But I'm, I'm using that on my hands. Am I supposed to use it on my face? There, you, um, there's the hydrating cream oh. and there's the repair cream. Oh, right. So the hydrating cream is, right. is for moisture and the repair cream is for the hands. protocol for, you can put this topically more for like spotting like a bug bite or right. eczema, psoriasis. Right. right. Um, and then acne. So if it's on your face, just like the smallest amount mm -hmm. is the best and you just spot treat it. So that's really nice. Um, so you would, you would wash your face. You can do a double cleanse, make sure all your makeup is off, use your microbiome friendly products. Normally you go from liquid to solid. So you're going to do like if you use a toner and you use a serum and then you use a gel and then a cream. So you want to layer up, but if you're fighting acne, I recommend using this first before the other products so it gets straight to the problem and starts healing it. Now, is it possible that when you first start using new products, you actually break out because it's bringing stuff out to the surface? It could, it depends on, um, on the condition of your skin. So um, if it has something with um, some glycolic in it that is sloughing off more dead mm -hmm. skin and then more is surfacing, um, it's possible, but you actually should see an improvement if it's a good skin, if it's a good quality um, treatment, you should see an improvement. And there might be a little bit of a, of a dip and then, but it should not sustain at that dip. It should reverse pretty fast. So I, I wanna ask you two questions. Okay. Um, and then we'll say goodbye everybody and thank you so much for joining us. Um, number one, when we had our shutdown, and we reopened mm -hmm. and you were able to start treating patients again. I, you know, I had a dentist appointment that got rescheduled and rescheduled and I went to the dentist for the first time and they were seeing patients all day long. And then I went to see Elizabeth and she was seeing patients all day long. And I thought to myself, like how scared, how frightened, how, you know, when, when everything first came back, how scared were you literally l leaning over someone's face without a mask mm -hmm. and treating their skin? I mean, this is the way that so many people, you know, in the dental profession, in the uh, skincare profession, make a living is literally hovering over other people's faces, uh -huh. which we were told to stay completely away from. Uh -huh. So how, how did you feel when you first went back? And especially you have two young daughters. Right. What, what, what kind of emotion did you go through when you first went back? Um, well, the, the nice thing is the medical office that my practice is in, we have a huge um, HEPA filter ventilation mm -hmm. right above where I'm working. So everything is being circulated out, like within seconds, it can clean a whole room, mm -hmm. like with viruses. Um, but but it is um, it is something that is of concern. And um, so for me, initially, I would just have them covering the mouth and the nose oh. and work around it until I needed to get by there. So and then I was double masked and. Um, face Shielded. guard <laughs> so and then gloves and then between treatments everything was you know sanitized um but we were only open for two weeks before we shut down again so um so it's it is something that is real and it's something that um moving forward and i, I think being trained as either a doctor or if you're careful as an esthetician you know like you've already been trained in this like we're hypersensitive to bacteria and germs and you know, touching your face and um, washing your hands. And so it was kind of normal practice, but exaggerated. I think my feeling was is when I went in, especially to the dentist and certainly to see Elizabeth, I, I really was like, you know, am I putting these people at risk? Like I, I felt so, on one hand, I felt good that the economy was rolling again for everybody and certainly for all of you that were working so close to people's faces. But on the other hand, I was like, am I putting people at risk just for being, you know, just for coming and, and that you were seeing so many uh, during the day and, and uh, on some level, my heart just, just sort of ached, mm -hmm. you know, for everybody. And yet at the same time, there was a thrill that things were starting to come back to normal, whatever that normal, mm -hmm. oh my God, will there ever be a normal again? I don't yeah. know, but. Um, I think there will be. Okay. I'm optimistic. Oh, my husband wants us to talk about dry farm wines. So we're going to talk about dry farm <laughs> wines and then we're going to go. And here's the reason why is a, we save the battery, but also we are freezing. <laughs>
here we are in Laguna Beach, California, and it is friggin' cold out there. So we're gonna um, gonna do that. But thank you, Tom. And also, I wanted to say hi to Paula, and I wanted to say hi to Susan Harrison. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to have you guys all here. So um, I we are big fans of Dry Farm wines, my husband and I. And Dry Farm uh, has a different connotation to us. It is a brand called Dry Farm Wines that we purchase. They are a distributor that bring wines into the country. They are organic, they are pesticide free, um, but from Colette's point of view, they also are actually dry farmed, uh, dry farmed. And I, I actually did not know that that was a thing. I only knew it as a brand, like Kleenex actually is tissue. Um, and Dry Farm actually has a meaning. So yes. tell my husband just a little bit about what Dry Farm and all of our other um, listeners. And I laugh because at our last cooking class, and by the way, I wanna invite all of you who are watching, if you haven't already, to join our cooking class November 22nd on Sunday. We're gonna be cooking as a group to be together and start the holiday off because my fondest memory of Thanksgiving is all the family and friends coming over the week of Thanksgiving and everybody cooking together so that we can get together on that Thursday and all enjoy and celebrate together. So I invite all of you, the invitation is down below on the Facebook page and I invite all of you to, to join us if you haven't already signed up because a lot of the people in uh, the gather with Nanny Bubby um, are our founders and they already have many signed up. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, let's talk about Dry Farm Wines. Okay, Dry Farm Wines, and then I'm gonna say something about this too because okay. these are important to me. Okay. Um, so Dry Farm Wines, I love... We'll say something about those first. Oh, okay. So we don't run out of time. Okay, so these are little globes, skincare globes, and they are used to drain your, um, your lymphatic Oh. system so under the eyes um the gels like under here the the head and basically what happens is that we have lymph glands 70 percent are in our face and neck oh and when they get blocked it it's a backup and oxygenated blood cannot come in to deliver the nutrients and the oxygen that it's meant to and so if we can do a quick lymphatic drainage you can do this at home and you wanna divide your face down the center and above and below the eyes. You don't wanna to roll toxins into the eyes. You want it to go up into the hairline and, and that's away it. from you the face. And you just roll that on your face we, like that? Yeah, we, I mean, there's more to it, but I just wanted to mention that, that lymphatic drainage is really important also to mask me because you wanna drain out toxins if you're working on it at home. You wanna make sure that your body is functioning properly. And if you do get toxins from drinking wine that's not dry farmed and it has pesticides you want to get them out so one of the ways that you can get them out is by doing lymphatic drainage on the face and, and where, do they also do the where do they find it they find it um you can find globes on Am on amazon oh or, okay and they're know, called just, lymphatic globes th they're globes but um but they're for draining the lymphatic system and they might not say that but they might say like you know take care of the puffiness under your eyes that that's what they're meant for um, and you can keep them in the refrigerator and they actually do that, but now you know why, because your channels have been blocked and your, your body hasn't been able to drain out the fluids and toxins. And that's why you're getting the puffiness and circles under your eyes. And, and so one last question, because we, we talked about this right at the beginning of the show, is that, so if you are bloated and it comes from eating grains, let's say you're gluten intolerant and those grains do play havoc on your body, mm -hmm. When you wake up or as you start to go through your day and you actually feel that, what is the one or two things you can do to help get that gone? Don't touch it again. <laughs> Don't eat it again. Um, and you, then? Yeah, exactly. And then after you beat yourself up for doing that, what do you do? But we don't want to beat ourselves up. You want to be gentle. I was just telling, um, telling Marla. Marla that we, we need to be very gentle with ourselves and forgiving if we do slip up. But um, what you wanna do is you're gonna flush your body, you're going to eat a lot of um, greens and um, berries and really bolster the, the vitamins in your body to help get rid of it and just flush it out. Um, exercising is also good. Visualization of how it feels to be good is also really important. Um, so those are a couple of things. I drink a lot of, um, even um, coconut water with a lot of electrolytes. Oh, um, very good. And really alkaline good. water, are you a fan of Al alkaline water? I love water? alkaline okay. water too. All right. Okay. 
So, moving on to Dry Farm Wines. Dry farm and wines. Uh, we're going to be signing off soon. Hi, Karen. So nice to have you here. I love that you sign on and watch almost every day. Thank you so much. I want to remind you to sign up for the cooking course. You'll find it below in uh, Nanny Bubby Facebook page. Tomorrow, because I'm in Laguna Beach until late Thursday, I'm going to take all of you to the beach with me tomorrow. Hopefully this cold weather in Laguna, it's actually too cold to even go down to the air coming off the beach. It was way too cold to be down there. But tomorrow, I promise, Wednesday, um, I'm going to be down there. Thursday, we're doing an interview with Brenda Prinza Valley. It's a mouthful. But nonetheless, we're doing an interview with her talking about alternatives that you can eat for Thanksgiving. So if you need a, a, good one. a recipe with cream in it, she's got an alternative for you to help make cream um, that is uh, actually dairy free or, or vegan. So we're gonna be talking about that on Thursday. And with that, we're going to talk right now about Dry Farm Wines. I love you all, we'll sign off in just a minute. Let's talk about Dry Farm. So Norm, I love wine tasting, I love wine country, and I, I love the experience. And if you've ever gone, you'll notice that a lot of the vineyards are planted closer together, the vines, mm -hmm. and they have a little tube that drips along and they're watering the, the vines and um, so dry farm wines actually there's a bigger space around them and there is not a drip system it's it's from the roots of the ground so they have to go into the ground uh -huh. to pull out the water and the nutrients and everything that they need to survive and so so there's no irrigation in dry farm no wines. irrigation and what's the benefit of that? Is is it just give the... It, the roots grow deeper. Uh -huh. So you have a richer like mineral content, uh -huh. the, theoretically, that the wines are getting. And there's a there's a different taste. Mm -hmm. It's not... These are... Sometimes it, it really depends on the vintage of the wine or the year that it's, it's produced. Because um, if it's a real wet season, you're going to have real fat, robust grapes. And if it's not, then they're going to be a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and and they won't produce as much, and, and the flavors are all different. They and are. They're wonderful. They don't use the chemicals. And they're usually and organic and pesticide-free. Yes. So I know from Dry Farm Wines, which is a brand and a distributor that goes worldwide and brings uh, wine in from all over the world that is Dry Farm Farmed, and pesticide free and organic um, each bottle of wine and you know I can't really drink regular wine anymore the flavor used to be when I went to dry farm wines I, I couldn't take it because I was so used to having heavy sugar mm -hmm. in the uh, California wines then I started drinking dry farm and I can really drink and enjoy it and then now when I drink regular wine I can taste the sugar I can taste the additives my stomach begins to hurt um, and so I really highly recommend it and again nobody's standing in line to pay me anything to, to um, you know promote their product and sure as the heck dry farm wines is not either but I cannot recommend it more for your gut um, for it also it has a lower alcohol level dry farm has about uh, 11 to 13 percent at the very most whereas most California wines are 16 to uh, 16 percent or more around that area it's a lot it is a lot, <laughs> a lot. it is a lot <laughs> yeah and less sugar and just better it's better all around so if you are going to enjoy a glass of wine um, you're now armed with information from Marla and I yes. about how to do it. And you can find dryfarmwines.com. No, we'll help you finish the Camus, Tom. Yeah. Oh, what did he say? <laughs> Just joking. Oh. <laughs> okay, then the I will finish the Camus myself. Okay, well, maybe I'll make an exception for that one. <laughs> anyway, I love you all. I really hope. It is my goal. You know, I started uh, in broadcast when I was very young, and doing interviews is something that I absolutely love doing. I learn, um, and, I tr and I work at asking the questions that I sincerely want to know and then I think you want to know as well certainly about skin in the gut I thought that we really slayed it for all of you it is all related to food um, and as much as I love to cook and entertain and do things and talk about uh, the dinner dreads and how we can all overcome that so that we can nourish our family not just feed our family but you know what there's a whole system to food and nourishing is not just what you're putting on the table for dinner it's about all of this. And so we're going to be talking about um, other things as the weeks roll on. I know Nancy Cleveland is on. We're going to be talking to Nancy um, a week from Thursday. Um, and so anyway, I, I love you all. I thank you all for joining. 
Um, and what did my mom say? I put, put in, in oxtail mushroom, mushroom barley parsnip soup and it was so good. I guess she put wine in that. Yes, it is so oh. good, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our sound. Oh, lost your sound. Really? Okay. okay. All right, everybody. Love you. See you soon. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Thank you. Remember, let's spread love, love like, like butter. butter. <laughs>